I often get asked to tie specific patterns. Today, Alfred, this pattern's for you, Alfred's Boatman. It's a fly he's been asking me to tie for a long time. So I'm tying it for you, Alfred, for everyone else out there. So come on and join me. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and my tying bench. Here I like to show you how I tie some of my favorite flies. If you look around, you'll see not only other fly tying videos on this channel, but you'll also see videos where I take you on the water and show you just how I like to use these flies. Today we're tying Alfred's Boatman or Alfred's Water Boatman. This fly is named after my friend Alfred who's been patiently waiting for me to show him how to tie a buoyant, spun and clipped water boatman pattern. An excellent pattern to have in your fly box to fish not only at the surface when fish are actively slashing at these insects, but also to fish on a sinking line where your line pulls the fly down to the water to imitate the way that the natural path that these insects, these air breathing insects, move from the surface to the bottom and back up to the surface again. It's a relatively simple fly to tie. So check out the description below for all the links to the materials I use on this fly and of course the recipe. So let's get to my bench and I'll show you how I tie it. So let's tie Alfred's Boatman. Into the jaws of my vise I have put a Daiichi 1530 number 10. You tie these in number 10s, number 12s uh, to imitate Boatman. I'm going to start my tying thread. About the midpoint, we're just back of the midpoint. It's going to be white tying thread. This is six aught MFC. Right back to the base. We're going to put a little tail of crystal flash on here. So I'm just going to take double that over. Secure that. It's just a little bit of a flash tail to help suggest the little air bubbles. So that crystal flash tail suggests the, helps suggest the air bubble of the natural uh, water boatman because they're air breathing insects so they gather a bubble of air which they trap along their bodies. They have a dark back so for that we're going to use some rainy stretch flex in dark red brown. You could use black. Get that tied in. And then, for the body, it's all deer hair, because this is a fly, we do a lot of buoyancy in our boatman and back swimmer patterns to fish them both at the surface, when the fish are crashing on them as they return to the surface, and also using intermediate lines, sinking lines, to drag them down. So the buoyancy, as you strip the fly down, it gets pulled down, and as you pause, it bobs back up again. So we're going to use some deer hair, spun and clipped, natural deer hair in this case, and I'm just going to take and use holding it by the the uh, tips just stroke out the under fur the short fibers because those will inhibit the flaring process or the spinning process and I'm actually going to take this and trim off the tip area because the tips are uh, don't spin as well because they're not hollow so we're just going to put a clump on here, and what I like to do is take this clump, I've trimmed it somewhat to size, holding it on an angle, a couple of wraps, and then just pull and let that spin or flare, and then I'm going to push it back. I can use a hair packer here or my thumbnails, and push it all the way back. I'm just going to pull this back if I can and make sure that this is going to pull over, and it is. And then just place a few extra wraps in there. If I have to, I'll get my scissors points in. Work this back. And then I'm going to take a couple of open wraps and repeat this process. So I'm going to take another, approximately slightly less than the diameter of a pencil, clean out the, the small under fur, small tips and under fur, trim away the tips, hold that on a bit of an angle towards me, now once, twice, let go and just let the thread tension spin it, 
and then push it back. And I'm trying to make this as dense a body as I can. And I'm just going to work my thread through. And do this again. Probably three or four stacks of deer hair, if you will, will suffice. I've prepared another clump. Lay that on a bit of an angle, a couple of wraps, a couple of wraps. Work this through and then pack it back. So I've still got some room. So again, I'm spinning the deer hair forward and pushing it back into position. So I don't have to try and stack the next stack of deer hair right here. It's easier to get the deer hair on up here and push it back into position. And I'll just go with a slightly narrower diameter clump or stack of deer hair. Prepare it again. Doing that off camera but just removing the short fibers and the under fur. Place that on the hook couple of wraps and then once I've got it enveloped in the thread then I can let go and just let it spin and push back and that's probably enough because I've still got to pull this over and uh, pull the wing case over put some legs on it so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to roll this over like so and I'm going to trim this flush right along the bottom as tight and flush as I can So I don't impede the hook and hook gape. So this thing will actually hook some fish. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim pretty well flush along the top as well. And then I'm just going to be very careful at the back here because I don't want to accidentally trim my shell back out of the way. Right. I can go even more flush and then I'm just going to trim this in kind of an oval shape along the sides this is where a curved pair of scissors comes in handy so these are Dr. Slick curved scissors and again I can use my fingers to manipulate pull things out of the way Just trimming this with the shape of a water boatman in mind. They're like a little beetle shape. And I got a few errant strands in there. And you want to be careful when you're trimming because once if you over trim, you can't glue it back on. scissors and I'm just going to reach in with the tips and be really sure I've got what I wanted want to trim in here I got one little fiber there that just does not want to leave no you do it's sort of over the top like this. We're going to trim this more along the sides. I want it a little narrower. The unfortunate part of doing deer hair is you will trim to your heart's content. Pull that over. That's going to give me a bit of a dark back on there, just like the natural bolt, but I might even trim that a little bit more this way. And you can get the general idea. 
Now we're going to tie in the legs. I'm just going to use some centipede legs and speckled brown and small. All right, so we're just going to lay one of the legs. I've got my thread right at the hook eye or close to it. I'm just going to tie that one in there. A couple of wraps. It's kind of a cumulative effect here going on. I'm going to make sure that that leg is where I want it to be, which is trailing out the side, like so. A couple of wraps back. Come forward, take the other strand, bring it across, and work back from the hook eye. It's okay to have a bit of a head on this. Now we've got a pair of legs that we'll trim later. And now we're just going to gently bring back over our shellback material. couple of wraps over the top, fold it back, make sure we haven't negatively affected the positioning of our legs, grab our scissors, trim away the excess, now we're just going to build up, I like to have little red heads on my boatmen, because they have, a lot of them have a prominent set of little red eyeballs, I think it gives a trigger point for those fish. So what we're going to do now is simply take a red sharpie, pull down on our tying thread, and turn our white thread red. Get that under control and just start winding right back against the legs. That'll help flare them out a little bit, which is what we want, so they'll kick out. I might add a little bit more. And we're going to whip finish. Trim away the excess. Give our legs trim to length. I like, I'm going to trim them, gather them together as best I can, hold them like so, and trim them even, or approximately even, with that crystal flash tail. And I think those are actually a little bit long, so I'm just going to come back and maybe go even with the body. It's okay to have them a little bit longer, I think they'll kick a little better. So just to give this a little more added protection, I'm going to just put a little coating of bone dry on everything. That'll add a little bit of shine to the wing case as well. That's just going to sit like that. Turn on my UV light. everything up that's going to lock everything. And there you have it. Alfred's Boltman. Point little pattern, pretty simple once you learn the trimming the deer hair. And then frankly I think I could trim that deer hair a little closer. Good enough. Don't want to go crazy? Trim a leg. There you have it. Simple, finished Alfred's Little Boatman 